So when it comes to distributions, usually, you know, you have a frequency, a relative frequency, and a cumulative frequency, and usually they're all in one table. Now, I've been doing them in separate tables just to explain each point. But imagine we want to do that down below. My directions aren't the greatest. But it says, create a frequency distribution, although it should say a frequency, relative frequency, and cumulative frequency distribution for the following data using a starting lower limit of zero and a class width of four. So remember, I said that the starting lower limit and the class width will always be provided in this class. So I have this set of data below, and I need to make a table. It's already made, but I want to talk you through a couple pieces of it. First thing I would do is look at the table and find the largest number. It's 18. It shows up more than once. It doesn't matter. But as I start, I would first write the zero for my starting class lower limit. Then I would add four to get my next lower limit. I'd add four to get my next lower limit. As I continue this process, I know that since I had a four here, I'm going to have to have a three ending before it. And remember, I could have started, you know, adding four to go down these columns. I want to continue making rows until I can cover the number 18. So since 18 would come in this last, fall into this last row, you know, this is where I'm going to stop. I don't want to turn around and have another row where I've added four to get, you know, 20 to 23 because I'll end up with a frequency of zero, and I don't want to have that. So I'm assuming that we're studying the number of units students are taking. So I've labeled it, and I've listed all my classes where the last class will include everything I need. Now, if I was asked for boundaries, remember, I would take 4 minus 3 to get 1, divide that by 2, and get 0.5. And when I subtract it from 0, I end up getting a starting class lower limit, or boundary I should say, of negative 0.5. If we're studying number of units that students are taking this semester, I don't think you can take negative 0.5. Maybe you know something, I don't know. But it doesn't matter because the boundaries aren't necessarily something that can really happen, it just is something to help clarify where the numbers go. I add the 0.5 to the 3 to get 3.5, and then copy that down to my next lower limit and I just follow that process down. So my boundaries column is complete. It's labeled and all my boundaries are listed. So next thing I want is the frequencies, but the way I chose to get that again was using tallies. Remember, that's optional. But here is something that's important. When I listed my frequencies, notice that I didn't have anybody in this third class. I have to list zero. In terms of your tally, that was optional and not graded, but when it comes to the frequency and go back and check that checklist, we always need to list a number, and in this case, zero is the appropriate number. The next column I want to work on is the relative frequencies, the percentages. I've chosen to make this optional work column because remember, I wanted to add up my frequencies 4 plus 5 is 9, plus 7 is 16, plus 4 is 20. So I would come over here and double check. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Yeah, so there's 20 numbers on the page. So I know I'm in the right tr track. Hopefully I got them in the right spots. To get the relative, I need to divide 4 by 20 and get that 0.2. But if I did it right there in my frequency column, it would look like my frequency was 4 20ths. Not <laughs> 4, but less than 1 for 4 20ths would be a fifth. So I made this optional work column right here to figure out my decimals that I then changed into percentages. Again, notice that I have 0% listed. And then lastly is those cumulative frequencies. And for those, remember, we just copy the first frequency over, and then I take 4 plus 5 to get 9. 9 plus 0 to get 9. 9 plus 7 to get 16. And 16 plus 4 to get 20. Realize that when it comes to cumulative frequencies, your last cumulative frequency should always match the grand total. So hopefully that gives you an overview of what a final table would look like.